The Golden State Warriors have won nine straight games as of today, and during this dominant stretch, they've been averaging 116.1 points per game, which would have been good enough for first in the league. They've been making defensive schemes look silly and confused as their offense has been practically unguardable. And you might be asking yourself right about now, just exactly how are the Warriors dominating their opposition so badly? Well, let's deep dive right into this question immediately. This dominant run by the Warriors all starts off with Kerr's offensive philosophy, which is based on ball movement and, equally important, off-ball movement. Everyone is constantly in motion, and through a series of split action, screens, and cuts to the rim, someone almost always gets free for a high percentage shot. And the thing is, it's almost impossible to guard. I mean, here, let me show you all some examples. Here's Curry with the ball. Clay is setting a screen for Curry. Now after the switch, Kevon Looney immediately sets up another screen for Curry. Then after two defenders switch onto Curry, the two-time MVP dishes it out to his fellow Splash brother, but that's not all of it either. Look at Kevon Looney. Although he just set a screen for Curry a second ago, he immediately sets another screen, this time off the ball to get Clay the open shot. Yes. Curry double teamed, five taps and straight away. And this, my friends, is a practice drill that Clay can do blindfolded. All right, maybe that's an exaggeration to be able to shoot that blindfolded, but y'all know what I mean. Moving on here. Here's another example of just why the Warriors have been so unstoppable. Here's Poole with the ball out on top. Kaminga is setting the screen for Clay, who was just scorching hot in this game. Because of his three-point shooting threat, both defenders switch onto him, leaving Jonathan Kaminga free. And when this guy sees an open lane to the rim, he attacks the basket on instinct. Sheesh, guys. And uh, this wasn't all of it either. Let me show you what I mean. While all the action was going on between Poole, Kaminga, and Clay, look at Damian Lee and GP2 in the top corner. They're switching and moving too. GP2 tried to cut to the rim while Damian was getting in position to shoot the corner three in case Kaminga dished it out. Like I said earlier, everyone and the ball is in constant motion, and through that type of offense comes so much havoc for defenses. It can be easy to think that all teams play like this, but they don't. I'm going to use the Lakers as an example of this, because from what I've seen so far, they've been playing quite disconnected all season. Here's LeBron with the ball up top. He shot fakes and got the defender in the air, and then saw a lane open to attack. Next, he drives to the hoop, which was the right move by the King, but when Miami closed the lane, look at the other four Lakers. They haven't moved at all. Miami's defense then just swallows the possession up and forces the turnover. Let's watch that again once more. Lots of the basketball in that right corner, not an area he can take oh. Yikes, guys. Now let's compare that really quickly with Warriors basketball. And I think I'll use that first clip I showed earlier. Is in his sights. Yeah. with a running start, look out! Sheesh, guys. The difference in basketball between these two teams looks like night and day at this point. Anyway, let's take a look at one more example of just how dominant and unstoppable this Warriors offense is. Here's Wiggins up top with the ball. With him on the floor are JTA, Curry, Poole, and GP2. Now, simultaneously, when Wiggins switches with JTA, Curry switches with Poole. Then, in this scramble, two defenders went off to guard Curry, leaving GP2 open all by himself. Back from his Golden State and Charlotte days. And an easy slam, an easy two. Another day, another dollar. Now, I'm not saying that the Warriors' split action is unstoppable, but it takes an elite-level defense to communicate what's going on in order to defend against it. Moving on here. Another reason why the Warriors' offense has been so dominating is because the Splash Brothers are finally back together, and Clay seems to finally have his rhythm back. I mean, did you all see what happened against the Kings? It was seventh. This has been an incredibly productive draft that Harkless took him. What a find. He saw Clay. Just stay away from those turnovers. They'll run it back. Steph found Clay again. Splash, splash, and more splash. Clay Thompson went 7 for 9 for 3 point range that game and was looking like the old 2019 Clay. I mean, here's what Steph had to say about Clay's performance against Sacramento. It was awesome to see. I love when he's got that pep in his step and getting rewarded with shots going in. He can get hot at any moment. He's got that look in his eyes. We love to see that. 
it's a big boost for the whole team and for him as well. Anyway, speaking of Steph, another reason why the Warriors offense has been so dominating is he's starting to get out of that shooting slump. Finally. I'll be the first to admit that I was getting a little bit worried about that slump. <laughs> I mean, just check this out. The Thunder here had a bit of life still. Just about a minute or two to go, they were down by five. But thanks to Clay's two shots, the point differential stretched out to nine. But you know, the Thunder are a young team that doesn't give up until all hope is lost. And well, that's exactly what Steph took from them right here. As he gives it a quick glance. Now he takes the three on the step back. Sheesh, guys. When Steph is making plays like that, that's when you know he's back. Anyway, moving on here. Another reason why the Warriors' offense has been so dominating is because everyone is scoring, and I mean it. Everyone on the roster is contributing. I mean, over the last eight games, there have been five players scoring in double figures each and every game. Steph, Clay, and Wiggins are the three main scorers. Then every game, someone else steps up. Whether it's Jordan Poole, Kaminga, Looney, Otto Porter, JTA, Damian Lee, Moses Moody, you name it, the Warriors are getting serious contributions from the role players. And on top of that, two of them are emerging to be elite players in the NBA. First off, Jordan Poole is putting up sixth man of the year type numbers. For the season so far, he's averaging 16.6 .6 points per game while shooting 34.1% from three point range and 56.1% from within the arc. And on top of that, he's leading the league in free throw percentages at 92.1%. If you compare him with the sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson, from last season, he's only averaging 1.8 less points, but he's shooting it more efficiently from the field overall. And aside from statistics and awards, he's been huge for the Warriors all season. Time and time again, Poole has been making big shots and probably none bigger than his game-winning shot against the San Antonio Spurs. Oh my goodness, guys. And to think that this kid's only 22 years old. Anyway, the other Warrior player that's currently emerging is Jonathan Kaminga. I've been hearing some new nicknames people are giving him these days, such as the Human Helicopter, the Apex Predator, the Volcano, but whatever you want to call him, he's been everything the Warriors could have hoped for, and more. I mean, check this play out right here. Here's Poole with the ball up top. The shot clock was starting to wind down, and to be honest, it was looking to be a lost possession for the Dubs. That was, until the human helicopter flew in. A defensive demon for Mark Dagnall, trying to chase him around. They wanted to get to Curry, but instead... Oh my goodness, guys. Did y'all see that? He jumped and dunked despite a guy standing right in his face. They wanted to get to Curry, but... They wanted to get to Curry, but... Kaminga is becoming a huge reason why the Warriors' offense has been dominating, and in addition, he's slowly starting to become more and more unguardable. I mean, look at what he does here. Kaminga's in the corner here being guarded by 6'11", Damian Jones. He dances with him a bit, then by using his strength and athleticism, he gets to the rim, spins, double pumps, then floats in the ball. Now look at this play here. It's nothing special, but... When it's just a single coverage and the floor is open, Kaminga is impossible to stop for probably 90% of the defenders in the league. And when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, you gotta keep your eyes on him and start boxing him out. Otherwise... In the corner, got the flyby, three on the way. No, but Kaminga... Dang, guys. That really reminds me of LeBron James' Game 6 in the Eastern Conference Finals back in 2012. Whether or not it's teamwork, or the individual talents of the Warriors superstars, or the talents of the role players, the Golden State Warriors have been completely running through the NBA as of late, and they don't look to be slowing down anytime soon. And the silly thing about all of this is, Draymond Green and James Wiseman aren't even in the lineup yet. And speaking of Draymond, it's pretty crazy that the Warriors are on this role while their heart and soul is still nursing his injury. Do y'all know exactly just how important Draymond is to the Warriors and how much better they'll be once he comes back? Well, I got a video for you right over here. And let me tell you, it's frightening that the Warriors have been so good this season without even being at full strength. Anyway, guys, this is another must-watch video, so go ahead and click it. And like always, I'll be waiting on the other side.